So let's move on and discuss uh, with respect to Dan. Can you tell us a little bit more of the actual, the data that served the basis for the accelerated FDA approval of lenitumumab in December 2014 for pH negative relapse refractory ALL? So first of all, yes. ALL is a much less common disease than yes. lymphomas and myelomas and most physicians are less likely to see this disease. Sure. Uh, if you look at the adults, it's about 2,500 new cases a year. So it's a rare disease. Interestingly, there has, until now, the, the, uh, the, new, the studies in this disease were really stagnant. In the last few years, we are seeing a revolution in an in, in approach to ALL. Uh, and, and one of them is the immunotherapy. The other two I'll just uh, hint is the, the use of pediatric protocols in young adults. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, approach is uh, identification of uh, Philadelphia-like uh, ALL. And the third one is immunotherapy. And in fact, in one year in New England Journal of Medicine, you have papers on all three of them. So it's, it's very interesting. You see three revolutionary treatments uh, in one disease in a very short period of time. And, and I think that brings out a lot of promise. So I'll just focus on the uh, blinatumumab is, is an immunotherapy. And so this is a, a, a blinatumumab is an antibody. And it's a, an antibody by itself doesn't have activity. Uh, it is a, it's a combination of an antibody that binds to CD19, uh, which is present on the ALL cells. Most ALL cells have CD19. But on the other side of the antibody, it binds to the T cells. And by binding to the T cells, it engages the T cells to get close to the, to the leukemic cells and it actually causes the lysis. So uh, you need T cells. So this is the first time uh, that we are able, at least in vivo, uh, to uh, use autologous T cells, as opposed to, as I mentioned earlier, allogeneic T cells, T cells to fight uh, uh, ALL. So the study that led to its approval uh, was based on 189 patients with relapse uh, ALL. They can be any relapse, um, and the overall outcome is about 40% uh, CR rate. This is for a single agent in relapse cases. That's probably the most effective single agent in the relapse uh, uh, patients. Uh, the toxicity was uh, relatively, uh, at least the overall toxicity was not so high. The problem is, as I mentioned earlier, is a cytokine release syndrome because there is these interactions between the, the T cells that are now uh, activated by the antibody, by the blinatunumab, and there's production of cytokines, so you can get cytokine release syndrome, which is usually fevers, drop in blood pressure, hypoxia. This usually happens at the beginning, the first days of treatment, and therefore there's a requirement to start the treatment uh, in the hospital. In fact, the dose is only nine milligrams for the first uh, eight days, and only then you go up to 28 days. How do you give that, Dan, the treatment and schedule for the so, so this is, a, that, that's a little bit of a problem. It's a very short-acting drug and you have to give it as a continuous infusion, and each cycle is 28 days. Currently, you need to change the bags every 48 hours. I think the FDA might approve it uh, to change the bag every 96 hours. So when the, the beginning, the patients have side effects uh, that are quite, look very serious, and there's a tendency to stop the drug. But if you give them steroids, uh, usually they get better. In terms of neurotoxicity, it is present, and it can come later. And, and that's something that you can treat with steroids, but it's, it, it's less uh, uh, common. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a little different to the patients because you have to come every, once they go outpatient, and, and then as an outpatient, they really tolerate it good because most of the toxicity is at the Terrible. beginning. Yes. And they have to come every other day to change the bag, including uh, weekends. It's, you can't, you can't uh, do anything about it, and this is a little bit of a, a, a burden for them. But this is the proof of concept that you can use uh, T cells, and we'll talk about CAR T cells, which is a variant yeah. of this, yeah. uh, that you can get complete remissions. The problem, this is not a curable approach. Uh, the disease-free survival is five months. It's a little longer than chemotherapy. <coughs> so it allows uh, patients to have more time 
uh, to get the, the treatment that is o the only curable treatment, which is allogeneic transfers. Mm -hmm. Still, the allogeneic cells are probably better than the modified autologous T cells would be in autonomous. So, Dan, can you comment how do you feel the future will hold? Is it going to be, do you recommend, uh, now we had to do single agent, but do you foresee combination with blinitumab with other agents and or an induction, consolidation? Do you think concurrent or maybe type of uh, post-treatment maintenance? What are your feels? What, what do you so, feel on that? So, so for relapse patients, I, I, the, uh, chemotherapy response to chemotherapy is extremely poor. There's actually no standard chemotherapy. Right. Right. We tend now to use binatumab as our first line for relapse, uh, and we think that will be the best thing to move them into uh, transplantation. Up front, would you use it up front in high risk patients? So in upfront, this has not been studied right. as high risk. I mean, you can, can think about using it in. MRD positive. But there is already a clinical trial uh, done by the Eastern Cooperative Group. It's, uh, and and there, it's a randomized trial where patients get standard chemotherapy and the other group of patients get standard chemotherapy but with four cycles of blinatunumab. And the blinatunumab is introduced somewhere in the consolidation. So those who get So not during the actual induction therapy, post-induction therapy? It's post-induction. Okay. The first three cycles are the same. There's one induction, two yeah. consolidations, and then they're randomized. Continue with chemotherapy or go with blinatunumab and then continue with the same chemotherapy. And the question mm -hmm. is, there's two questions. First, if you will get an over, the overall survival will be better. But the question, which patients will do better? Right, because right. some patients are MRD positive and some are MRD negative. So is it going to be that the MRD positive will be better or only the MRD negative? Right. The study is powered to look at these two questions. So that will be a very interesting thing. It, it, the study yes. is in, uh, enrolling quite well. And, you know, people can uh, refer to, uh, to centers that are using it. And I think it's an extremely important study in which, for the first time, this new concept yes. is new frontline with chemotherapy. I think it's very important.